A Chinese national who killed three women in a flat in Yishun four years ago has been sentenced to death. Wang Zhijian was tried for the murder of his lover, Madam Zhang Meng, her teenage daughter, Feng Jianyu, and their flatmate, Yang Jie. 46-year-old Wang was found guilty of culpable homicide not amounting to murder for two charges and guilty of murder for one charge. He also slashed Madam Yang's daughter, Li Mei Lin, who was 15 years old at the time of the incident. One night, as my mother and I slept, we were startled awake by screams for help and choking sounds. Suddenly, a man burst into my room and began stabbing me. My mother escaped outside, but he followed and threatened me. In an attempt to secure myself, I kicked him and hid in the bathroom. But he broke in and continued his attack. This is Lee Malin's account the sole survivor of a horrifying murder in Singapore that claimed three lives and left a blood-stained scene. Today, we delve into what triggered this dreadful event. In the dead of night on September 18, 2008, Eerie, dim lights cast ghostly shadows within the 12-story apartment complex at 349 11th Avenue in Ngi Thuan District, Singapore. Suddenly, a desperate cry for help pierced the silence from Building 3, 49, jolting the residents from their slumber. Frantically, they threw open their windows searching the dark for the source of the disturbing noise. Peering into the impenetrable darkness, the residents could barely make out any shapes, the lack of light blurring everything into obscurity. The cries for help had ceased, but this brought little comfort to the onlookers, now gripped by an unsettling curiosity. Just as they began to close their windows, a thunderous crash echoed, suggesting something heavy had plummeted to the ground. Below, under the faint glow of streetlights, a crowd's gaze was drawn to the first floor walkway. A wave of shock washed over them as they spotted a motionless figure lying on the concrete, dark liquid pooling around it, painting a scene of horror. In a state of alarm and fear, the residents retreated to their rooms and hastily dialed the police. Responding at 050, the Ungi Thuan District Police arrived, ready to unravel the mystery. The initial investigation revealed a middle-aged woman clad in nightwear, lifeless on the open lower floor of the building, with no clear indication of which apartment the woman had fallen from, the police embarked on a meticulous search, descending from the twelfth floor to the ground level, tracing the precise spot of her fall. Their investigation took a turn upon reaching the sixth floor, where a room bore faint red smears, possibly blood, on its door. Communicating through silent, meaningful glances, to avoid causing a stir, the officers, bracing themselves for a grim discovery, knocked on the door. After a wait punctuated by faint noises from within, a tall, well-dressed man in his forties cautiously opened the door. The lead investigator probed, There's, There's been, been a, a fall, fall from, from this, this building. building. Can you, Can tell, you tell us, us which, which room, room the person, person came, came from? from? Did you Did hear, you hear anything, anything unusual? unusual? The man, cutting off the inquiry, claimed, I was, I was just, just in the, in the shower, shower, and moved to close the door abruptly. His behavior immediately raised red flags among the officers. 
Guns drawn and ready, they commanded. Don't, Don't move. move. Hands, Hands up. up. We need we to need search, to search the, premises. the premises. Cooperate, Cooperate or, we'll or we'll be forced, be forced to, shoot. to shoot, they declared firmly. Guns trained on the middle-aged man. Reluctantly, with visible hesitation, he raised his hands in surrender. Spotting bloodstains at the door, the police had already called for backup from the SCDF, who arrived promptly. Cutting through the bloodied iron door, the team prepared for the worst. The first step inside revealed a ghastly tableau. Blood was splattered across the floors and walls. An ajar kitchen window hinted at a possible escape route or point of the fatal fall. Venturing deeper into the apartment, the officers approached the farthest of the three bedrooms. The door swung open to a gruesome sight. A middle-aged woman's lifeless body, about forty, lay naked in front of the bed, covered in dozens of stab wounds. Her lower half bore the brunt of a frenzied attack. Nearby, another body, a younger woman, lay sprawled with multiple stab wounds in her abdomen. Initial forensic analysis suggested a total of 98 stab and slash wounds on both victims. A bloodied serrated knife, the possible weapon of the crime, lay abandoned on the bedroom floor. The officers, proceeding with caution, inspected the remaining rooms before reaching the attached bathroom. Blood was everywhere. A kitchen knife and a soaked belt were found in the washing machine silent witnesses to the carnage. In the bathroom, they found a young woman, barely clinging to life, with a meat cleaver by her side. They rushed her to the nearest hospital for urgent care. The scene left the Ngi Thuan District Police in shock. Three dead and one fighting for her life. The sole man in the apartment unscathed and freshly showered, stood out with his right index finger oddly bandaged, adding to the mystery of that tragic night. The investigation swiftly sprang into action, with the police zeroing in on a towering figure, suspecting his pivotal role in the tragic demise of three individuals. The suspect, a 42-year-old Tianjin native named Wang Zhijian, who had ventured to Singapore on a short-term visa, found himself under the intense scrutiny of a comprehensive police inquiry at the station. In their quest for clarity, the authorities pieced together the identities of those entwined in this dark tapestry. The ill-fated woman who met her end after plummeting from the sixth floor was Yang Jie, a 36-year-old from Shenyang Liaoning, employed in clerical work at a private firm. A mother of two, her younger daughter resided in Dalian, China, with a new partner. Meanwhile, the other daughter, Li Meilin, merely 14 and grappling with life-threatening injuries in the bathroom, was a student braving the rigors of high school. Another piece of this grim puzzle was Zhang Meng, 41, also hailing from Tianjin like Wang Jijian, discovered lifeless under the bed. Accompanying her in this tragic fate was Feng Jianyu, 17 years old, her own flesh and blood. The lives of Feng Jianyu and Li Meilin were intertwined by friendship and their shared journey of studying in Singapore. This connection had led Zhang Meng to open her home to Yang Jie and her family. Yet, amidst these familial ties, Wang Jijian stood as an enigma. Neither a part of Zhang Meng's nor Yang Ji's family, his presence in the apartment raised a myriad of questions. What were his ties to the four victims? What chain of events led to this heart-wrenching catastrophe? 
These were the perplexing questions the police were determined to unravel to shed light on this harrowing case. The interrogation of Wang Zhijian, born in 1966 in Tianjin, China, began with a meticulous probe into his past and present circumstances. Unemployed at the time, Wang Zhijian delved into his complex history with Zhang Mang, a relationship that originated in 1996 in a brokerage firm in Tianjin. There, amidst the hustle of stock trading, a colleague introduced him to Jiang Meng. His past also included a tenure as a supervisor at a Tianjin port in 2004 and a divorce from his former wife due to irreconcilable differences. A pivotal moment occurred in November 2006 when Jiang Meng's husband confronted Wang Jijian, forcing Jiang Meng to choose between them. She chose Wang. Following her divorce in 2007, the Zhang family began a campaign of harassment against Wang Zhijian, marked by physical assaults and death threats, even at his workplace. This harassment culminated in Wang Zhijian's early retirement, along with a settlement of 400,000 CNY, approximately $55,000. This background set the stage for further complexities. Wang Jijian recounted how, in the early stages of their relationship, he lavishly spent a quarter of his savings on designer clothing and extravagant meals for Zhang Meng. However, the tide turned when her ex-husband had a stroke, leading Zhang Meng to end their relationship and return to her former spouse. Yet, in a twist of fate, merely four months later, Zhang Meng and her daughter moved in with Wang Jijian. The saga continued as Wang Jijian catered to their needs, once splurging $140 on a crab meal at a seafood restaurant before returning to Tianjin. Zhang Meng soon beckoned him back, suggesting employment opportunities through her connections at a logistics company. In a subsequent visit on August 3rd, Wang Zhijian encountered agents demanding fees for job placement, but Zhang Meng refused to cover these costs, sparking numerous disputes. Another call from Zhang Meng on September 2nd informed Wang Zhijian of her daughter Jian Yu's school change, prompting his return to Singapore after withdrawing $970, almost his entire savings. Within three days, he exhausted $280, including $120 on a crab dinner for Zhang Meng and her daughter, a meal he barely shared. Wang Zhijian's narrative took a bitter turn when he described his living conditions. He recounted to the police with palpable anger. I had no money left for crab. All my funds went to feeding them. I prepared, I prepared their, their meals, meals while, surviving while surviving on leftovers, leftovers washing, washing all their, their clothing, clothing by hand, hand including, including their, their underwear. underwear. I, was I was confined to the bedroom, the bedroom naked, naked, as Zhang Meng forbade me to leave in the presence of her daughter and other tenants. With no bathroom access, I resorted to using plastic bags and newspapers for my sanitary needs. I endured in silence, fearing even harsher treatment. Zhang Meng's aggression even extended to biting me. This harrowing account painted a picture of a man pushed to the brink, living in deplorable conditions under Zhang Meng's strict and unusual rules, hinting at a deeper, more complex web of emotions and motivations behind the tragic events that unfolded. Wang Zhijian's account began with a seemingly mundane disagreement that rapidly escalated into a night of terror. 
around 8 p.m. on September 18, he recounted. Zhang Meng entered my room, craving crab once more. I reminded her of the recent indulgence, pointing out the overdollar 100 I had already spent on their last crab feast. A heated argument erupted, filled with harsh words and insults. She belittled me, comparing me to the lowest of animals. Her words ignited a fury within me, a resentment for all I had sacrificed. As the night deepened, the tension in the room became palpable. Wang Jijian lay awake next to Zhang Meng, his mind racing with the day's confrontations. A suffocating pressure filled the room, he described, my body shaking with rage. My thoughts spiraled out of control, haunted by the betrayal and the unjust way Zhang Meng had squandered my savings. In a fit of anger, Wang Jijian rose and entered the kitchen. The sight of the uneaten seafood, left unrefrigerated, symbolized the decay of their relationship. In a moment of uncontrollable rage, he seized a kitchen knife. Describing the attack, he said, The knife, the knife became an extension, an extension of my wrath. I plunged it into Zhang Meng's abdomen, unleashing a frenzy of stabs as her screams echoed in the room. My rage was relentless. Even as Jiang Yu entered the room, I couldn't stop myself. Overcome with blind fury, I attacked her too. However, Wang Zhijian's narrative began to unravel under forensic scrutiny. DNA evidence on the knife contradicted his claims of attacking Yang Jie and Li Melin. Confronted with these inconsistencies, he altered his story. Realizing the gravity of his actions, Wang Zhijian recounted his hasty attempts to erase the evidence. In a daze, I hid the kitchen knife, aimlessly grabbed a belt and threw it into the washing machine. I then, I then armed, armed myself, myself with another, another serrated, serrated knife, knife, he admitted. His recount continued with a chilling detachment. I found, I found Yang, Yang Ji and, and Li Mei Lin in another, in another room, room and attacked. attacked. When, when Yang, Yang Ji fled, fled, I realized she was gone. gone. Unable, Unable to, to find her, her I, turned I turned my rage towards, towards Li Mei Lin, Lin, who had sought refuge in the bathroom. In the bathroom. Despite, Despite her efforts to barricade herself, I broke, I broke in, in and grievously wounded her. her. Preparing to flee, he cleaned the weapons and himself, only to be interrupted by a knock at the door. The police had arrived. When queried about Yang Ji, he coldly responded, I didn't, I didn't harm her. her. I'm, not I'm not responsible, responsible for her, her death. death. But the evidence suggested otherwise. Investigators found signs of a desperate struggle, with Yang Jie likely trying to grasp something for support before her fatal fall. Li Mei Lin, the sole survivor and Yang Jie's daughter, vividly described the harrowing ordeal, corroborating the evidence of her mother's struggle and her own near-fatal encounter. The bloodstains on the iron door hinted at Wang Jijian's frantic escape attempts after the gruesome act. The underlying motives for Wang Jijian's heinous acts became more evident, symbolically etched into the ink of the three tattoos on his body, each a testament to his turbulent relationship with Zhang Meng. Wang Jijian consistently claimed his mind had succumbed to a void during the attacks, alleging a total loss of memory regarding the assault on the four victims. He professed ignorance of his own actions, unable to explain the presence of the knife or the ferocity unleashed, particularly towards Zhang Meng and the others. Psychiatric evaluations hinted at Wang Jijian grappling with an adjustment disorder marked by uncontrolled, rage-filled outbursts. However, subsequent investigations painted a different picture, 
suggesting premeditation. Wang Zhijian's calculated composure while erasing traces of the crime, methodically bathing, removing bloodstains and plotting his escape, sharply contradicted his claims of a memory blackout. This disparity in his narrative and actions intensified suspicions about his intent and preparation for the crime. His demeanor during the pre-sentencing period only solidified this perception, as he exhibited unabated aggression, attacking a fellow inmate in a display of raw brutality. Yet, what truly unsettled observers was Wang Zhijian's demeanor post-arrest, a confident, almost contented smile, as if his heinous acts were a cathartic release, a liberation from a deep-seated loathing. This eerie satisfaction provoked a wave of online outrage, underscoring the depth of Wang Jijian's insensitivity and cruelty. On November 30th, 2012, the courts found Wang Jijian guilty of murdering Yang Ji and the mother-daughter duo, Fang Jian Yu. He filed an appeal on September 7, 2013, seeking to overturn the verdict, but to no avail. On November 28, 2014, the appellate court in Singapore upheld his death sentence. Two weeks following the tragedy, on October 2, 2008, the three victims were laid to rest. Among the mourners was Yang Jie's daughter, Li Mei Lin, still recuperating and visibly traumatized. The incident left her battling an overwhelming fear of darkness, a physical and psychological scar marking a poignant shift in her life. Once a place of promise, Singapore had now become the backdrop to her deepest sorrows and mental anguish.